This is Lecture 65b in the ABCs of Communism and Bolshevism 2018, Volume 4 on Oceania. And our subject today is Part 2, From Primitive Communism to the Slave Stage in Polynesia. And in particular, we're going to be talking about the islands of Tonga, Samoa, and Fiji. Now, the cultural and linguistic geography of Polynesia comprises islands diffused throughout a triangular area with sides of 4,000 miles. The area from the Hawaiian Islands in the north to Easter Island in the east and to New Zealand in the south were all settled by Polynesians of the advanced theocratic chiefdom stage. Navigators traveled to small inhabited islands using only their own senses and the knowledge passed by oral tradition from navigator to apprentice. In order to locate directions at various times of day and year, Navigators in eastern Polynesia memorized important facts, namely the motion of specific stars and, there would, and where they would rise on the horizon of the ocean. Of course, equally important was knowledge of weather, best times for travel, wildlife species locations, directions of swells on the ocean, the colors of the sea and sky, because such things determine how the crew would feel about their journey. These wayfaring techniques, along with outrigger canoe construction methods, were kept as guild secrets. Generally, each ATC maintained a guild of navigators who had a very high rank. In times of fam famine or difficulty, these navigators would conduct essential trade for inter-island aid and evacuate people to neighboring islands. On his first voyage of the Pacific exploration that he undertook, Captain Cook had the services of a Polynesian navigator, Tupaya. Tupaya, who drew a chart of the islands, um, did so with a chart of 200 mile radius to the north and west of his home island of Raiatea. Tupaya had knowledge of 130 islands and named 74 of them on his chart. Tupaya had navigated from Raiatea in short voyages to 13 islands. He had not visited western Polynesia. Since Tupaya's grandfather's time, the extent of voyaging by Raiataeans had lessened to the islands of eastern Polynesia. Tupaya's father and grandfather had passed the knowledge to him about the location of the major islands of western Polynesia and the navigation information necessary to voyage to Fiji, Samoa, and Tonga. Cook's admiralty orders directed him to search for the great southern continent, so Cook ignored Tupaya's chart. To this day, original traditional methods of Polynesian navigation are still taught in the Polynesian outlier of Tamaku Island in the Solomon Islands. Now, Polynesia divides into two distinct cultural groups, East Polynesia and West Polynesia. The culture of West Polynesia has high populations, strong institutions of marriage, well-developed judicial, monetary, and trading traditions. It comprises the groups of Tonga, Niue, and Samoa, extending to the atolls of Tuvalu in the north. The Polynesians spread outward from the Samoan Islands into the Tuvaluan atolls, with Tuvalu providing a stepping stone to migration into the Polynesian outlier communities in Melanesia and Micronesia. Eastern Polynesian cultures, on the other hand, are highly adapted to smaller islands and atolls. Principally, they are the Cook Islands, Tahiti, the Tuamotus, the Marquesas, Hawaii, Rapa Nui, which is also called Easter Island, and the smaller Central Pacific groups. The large islands of New Zealand were first settled by Eastern Polynesians who adapted their culture to a non-tropical environment. Leaders were chosen in ATC Polynesia based on their hereditary bloodline. Samoa combined learned skills with hereditary rights in its ATC to choose its leaders, and this system is called Famatai, according to Ben R. Finney and Eric M. Jones. On Tahiti, for example, the 35,000 people living there at the time of European discovery were divided between high-status persons with full access to food and other resources and lower-status persons with limited access. Religion, farming, fishing, weather prediction, outrigger canoes, similar to modern catamarans, and their construction and navigation were highly developed skills, and the population of an entire island depended on them. Trading of both luxuries and mundane items was important to all groups, 
and many low-lying islands could suffer severe famine if their gardens were poisoned by salt from the storm surge of a tropical cyclone. In these cases, fishing, the primary source of protein, would not ease loss of food energy. Navigators in particular were highly respected, and each island maintained a house of navigation with a canoe building area. Settlements by the Polynesians fall into two categories, the hamlet and the village. The size of the island inhabited determined whether or not a hamlet would be built. The larger volcanic islands usually had hamlets because of the many zones found across the island. Food and resources were more plentiful. These settlements of four to five houses, usually with gardens, were then built so that there would be no overlap between the zones. Villages of 30 or more houses were built on the coasts of smaller islands. Usually these villages were fortified with walls and palisades made of stone and wood. On atoll groups, houses were built on only one of them, the others devoted to food cultivation. As well as being great navigators, these people were artists and artisans of great skill. Simple objects such as fish hooks would be manufactured to exacting standards for different catches and decorated even when the decoration was not part of the function. Stone and wooden weapons were considered to be more powerful the better they were made and decorated. In some island groups, weaving was a strong part of the culture and gifting woven articles was an ingrained practice. Dwellings were imbued with character by the skill of their building. And body decoration and jewelry is of an international standard to this very day. The religious attributes of Polynesians were common over the whole Pacific region. While there are some differences in their spo spoken languages, they largely have the same explanation for the creation of the earth and sky, for the gods that rule aspects of life, and for the religious practices of everyday life. People have traveled thousands of miles to celebrations that they all owned communally. Now, Polynesian languages are all members of the family of Oceanic languages, a sub-branch of the Australian language family. Polynesian languages show a considerable degree of similarities. The vowels are generally the same, A, E, I, O, and U, pronounced as in the Italian, Spanish, and German, and the consonants are always followed by a vowel. The languages of various island groups show changes in continents. R and V are used in Central and Eastern Polynesia, whereas L and V are used in Western Polynesia. The glottal stop is increasing, increasingly represented by an inverted comma or okina. Now, Tongatapu was the first occupied island and that was around 600 BC. It has the highest concentration of archaeological remains in the Pacific, beginning with the earliest traces of Lapita pottery at 900 BC, 300 years after the first settlements in Tonga were established. Now, archaeologist David Burley from Simon Fraser University discovered this early pottery, pottery around the fact Faguta Lagoon, 1,200 miles from the Lapita foundry pottery found at Santa Cruz in the Solomon Islands. Tonga Tapu is the main island of the Kingdom of Tonga. The Kingdom of Tonga, Kingdom of Tonga never succumbed to imperialism and has always been independent. The island itself is 92 square miles, um, or 100 square miles taking on the neighboring islands, and rather flat as it is built of coral limestone. The island is covered with a thick fertile soil consisting of volcanic ash from neighboring volcanoes. At the steep coast of the south, heights reach an average of 115 feet and gradually decrease in altitude above sea levels toward the north. Togataku is highest in elevation around the villages Fumotu and Nakolo with a height of 213 feet. The capital city of the ATC and slave king stage kingdom times was always at one or another place on the island of Togatapu. The first Togatapu capital city was built at Toloa in the eastern district of Togatapu near the village of Malapoin in AD 900. The second or Hekete capital city was built in Hamonga, a Maui trilithon and was the Togatapu capital from AD 1000 until 1220. 
And finally, the third capital finished construction at, construction at Mua in A.D. 1220 and was the capital until 1851 when Nuku'alofa became the national capital. In short, Tonga Tapu was always the capital of the Tongan Empire. At its maximum, it extended 620 miles in breadth. That is the empire. It is the location of its current capital, Nuka'alofa. It is located in Tonga's southern island group, to which gives its name, and is the country's most populous island, with approximately 71,260 residents. 70.5% of the national population lives on 100 square miles. Its maximum height is 213 feet above sea level. Tonga Tapu is Tonga's center of government and the seat of its monarchy. North of Tonga Tapu Island are many small isolated islands and coral reefs which extend up to 4.3 miles from Tonga Tapu's shores. The almost completely closed Fanga Uta and Fanga Kaka lagoons are important breeding grounds for birds and fish as they live within the mangroves growing around the lagoon's shores. The island has only but a few sandy beaches because of its raised coastlines apart from the many small islands in the north boasting some of the best beaches in Tonga Tapu. Tonga Tapu has a rather cooler climate than the rest of Tonga as it is in the southernmost group of islands in the country. Because of this, fruit production is lower in Tonga Tapu than it is in the warmer islands in the north. Now the farming mariner tribes became simple chieftains. On Tonga Tapu, simple chieftains arose to organize society for an increased competition for resources and eventually the chieftain required ideological reinforcement in the absence of any internal state mechanisms to enforce decisions of the center. Accordingly, the ATC stage evolved and this religion featured cannibalism as one of its central ideological tenets. Tonga Tapu was politically consolidated by a single individual of the future Tui Tonga familial line, as oral tradition traces the king's lineage back through 39 individuals that could have started as early as AD 950. The Maritime Empire, made famous by oral tradition, however, did not begin until after AD 1200. So, from the ATC to the kingdom, by the AD 1100s, Tonkins and the Tongan paramount chief, Tui Tonga, had a reputation across the central Pacific, and that reputation extended from Niue, Samoa, Rotuma, Wallace and Futuna, New Caledonia, to Tikopia, and was achieved in the advanced theocratic chief from stage. In AD 1200 to 1500, the Tui Tonga Empire, or Tongan Empire, became a class-divided and state-organized kingdom in Oceania. It featured expansion and inter-island hegemony. The empire reached its maximum during that time. As we have seen, the capital of the Tonga Empire was always on the island of Tonga Tapu, and afterwards there was widespread Tongan influence and evidence of transoceanic trade and exchange of material and non-material cultural artifacts. In the AD 1400s and again in the 1600s, civil war erupted when the Tonga ATC had become a class-divided and state-organized kingdom. After the bloody civil wars, political power in Tonga belonged to the Tui Kato Kapulu dynasty. The seeds of rebellion were planted, according to legend, to the sons of Atiogi, namely Sabea, Tuna, Fate, and Ula Masui, who was actually a grandson of Etiopi. The three brothers and their nephew led a wide-scale campaign of civil disobedience that ultimately escalated into the military overthrow of the Tala Kaifaiki. Driven westward from Alipata, Upolu, where the Tui Tonga's birthday festivals were underway, to the coast of Mulifanua, the king and his bodyguards were quartered against the sea. There was fierce fighting all the way to the sea, where Muli Fanua reached his naval vessels and called out to those on the land. Upon his departure, the aged monarch delivered a short speech that praised the brave fighting qualities of the Samoan warriors and conceded victory to his once subjects. The Maliatoa title is taken from the opening phrase of the speech, Maliatoa Malietao, meaning great warriors well fought. 
It is said that brothers Tuna and Fata both took a fancy to the honor spoken by the deposed Tuitonga, and a quarrel between the two ensued. Legend tells that one brother was struck dead by the other, and their eldest brother, Sevea, who resuscitated and placated both contenders, averted chaos. The political vacuum left by the ousting of Talakafaiki was immediately filled by Sevea, who was unanimously nominated as paramount ruler of Upolu, Savai, Man Manono, and Tutula. Sevea was bestowed the title Maleatoa, which his brothers had fought over. In 1845, an ambitious young warrior, strategist, and orator named <coughs> Tafahau, Tafahau united Tonga into his kingdom. He held the title of Tui Kanokapulu because he had been but had been baptized with the name of George or Jiaoji in 1831. In 1875, with the help of the missionary Shirley Waldemar Baker, he declared Tonga a constitutional monarchy. He emancipated those held unfree, enshrined a code of law, land tenure, and freedom of the press, and limited the power of the land and nobility. On May 1900, May 18, 1900, Tonga became a British protected state under a treaty of friendship. When European settlers and rival, rival Tongan nobles tried to oust the second king, within the British Empire, which posted no higher permanent representative on Tonga than a British consul, Tonga formed part of the British Western Pacific Territories. Under a high colonial, uh, colonial high commissioner residing in Fiji from 1901 until 1952, despite being under the protectorate, Tonga retained its monarchy without interruption. On the 4th of June, 1970, the Kingdom of Tonga got independence. Which brings us to Samoa. The independent state of Samoa, commonly known as Samoa and until 1997 as Western Samoa, is a unitary parliamentary democracy with 11 administrative divisions. The two main islands are Savai and Upolu. There are, with, these are, there are, with four smaller islands surrounding them, uh, today the capital city is Apia. The Lapita people discovered and settled the Samoan Islands around 3,500 years ago. The oldest date on archaeological remains in Samoa has been calculated by New Zealand scientists from a Lapita site at Mule Fanua with 4,288 sherds and two Lapita-type adzes. Radiocarbon dates from Mule Fanua run from 2930 to 2800 BP. All subsequent prehistoric pottery in Samoa is Polynesian plainware that is everywhere in the Samoan Islands. The Samoans originated from Austronesian predecessors during the terminal eastward Lapita expansion period from Southeast Asia and Melanesia that occurs between 2500 and 1500 BC. The archaeological record supports oral tradition and native genealogies that indicate inter-island voyaging and intermarriage between prehistoric Samoans Fijians and Tongans. As we have seen in early Polynesian history, Samoan King Tui ruled from 1250 to 1300 over several Western Polynesian polities. These included the Niue, Uvea Futuna, Upolu, Savai, and what are now the islands of eastern Fiji's Lau province, Tui Tonga. Talakafaiki established a long term residence at Safotu, Savai on Samoa and installed his brother Lauti Bunia as governor of the western Samoa islands. Samoan lore suggests that Talakafaki's reign was one of tyranny and suppression that was highly resented by his Samoan subjects. There is a recorded succession in the Malieto lineage of 28 kings thereafter. The defendants, or descendants of the Malietoa lineage, both titular and biological, are referred to collectively as the Sa Malietoa. Sa Malietoa of today is expansive and transcends geographical boundaries, religious persuasions, socioeconomic class, and even ethnicity, considering various chiefly families in Fiji and other Pacific 
societies are genealogically linked to the Malayatoa family are the subject of descendants of the Malayatoa title. It's a thorny one, riddled with claim and counterclaim, present from the first Malayatoa to the present day. In terms of relative history, the oldest branch of the modern Sa Malayatoa is the Sa Natua Tasima, also spelled Guatu <coughs> Tasina. Malayatoa Natutiasina was the half-brother of Vanupo who allied with his own nephew Talavu against the London Missionary Society and the pacifist policy of Vanupo and the Christians in 1842. He is better known by his other chiefly title, Taima Lelagi. The Sa Natasina considered the Mount the Mount Tapovi, Tamalelagi's former residential grounds to be their familial headquarters. Their council house is located in Sapapali Savai. Although only the apical ancestor of this branch has held the Malayatoda title, the 1939 ruling grants the Sa Natuatisima deliberating rights on the succession of the Malayatoda title. Best known of the three modern branches, the Sa Muli has been highlighted as Samoa's royal family for over a century. The families of the Samoli trace their genealogies to Malayatoa Moli. The Samoli maintains a family council house in Sapapali called Potoa, which since it was established by Malayatoa Vanupo, um, also held the ancestral mota of the Sina and Sa-Talavo. Sa Samoa remained under Malayatoa chieftains until its east-west division by the 1899 Tripartite Convention and subsequent annexations by the German Empire and the United States. The German-controlled western portion of Samoa, consisting of the bulk of Samoan territory, was occupied by New Zealand in World War I. New Zealand administered Samoa under a Class C League of Nations mandate until Samoa received independence on January 1, 1962. The new independent state of Samoa with the Malayatoa title holder ended with the death of Malayatoa Tanu Mafili II on May 11th of 2007. And now we come to Fiji. Fiji in the South Pacific Ocean is 1,300 miles northeast of New Zealand's North Island. Its closest neighbors are Vanuatu in the west and New Caledonia to the southwest. New Zealand's Kermadec Islands lie to the southeast. Tonga to the east, and Francis Wallace and Futuna Islands also. Tuvalu lies to the north. Fiji covers a total area of 75,000 square miles, of which around 10% is land. It is an archipelago of more than 330 islands and more than 500 islets, amounting to a total land area of 7,100 square miles. The farthest island is Ono Ilau, the two major islands, Viti Levu and Vanua Levu, account for 87% of the population of almost 860,000 people. The capital, Suva, on Viti Levu serves as Fiji's principal cruise port. About three quarters of Fijians live on Viti Levu's coasts, either in Suva or in smaller urban centers like Nedai or Latoka, the home of the sugarcane industry. Viti Levu's interior is sparsely inhabited due to its terrain. Now we come to the geology and geography of the Fiji Islands, the majority of whom, of which were formed through volcanic activity starting around 150 million years ago. Today, some geothermal activity still occurs on the islands of Banua, Levu, and Tabeuni. Fiji lies 2,770 miles southwest of Honolulu, and 1,100 miles north of New Zealand. Of the 332 islands and 522 smaller islets making up the archipelago of Fiji, 106 are permanently inhabited. Viti Levu, the largest island, covers about 50%, 57% of the nation's land area. Hosts the other two official cities, the capital of Suva and Lautoka, and most other major towns. The latter include Nasori, Baileka, Ba, Tavua, Korovu, Nasinu, and the International Airport at Nenai, and contains some 69% of the population. 
Fadua Levu, 40 miles to the north of Viti Levu, covers just over 30% of the land area, though is home to only some 15% of the population. Its main towns are Labasa and Savu Savu. In the northeast, in the northeast, it features Natewa Bay, carving out the Loa Peninsula. Both islands are mountainous, with peaks up to 4,000 feet rising abruptly from the shore and covered with tropical forests. Heavy rains of 304 centimeters or 120 inches annually, a fall on the west windward or southeastern side, covering these sections of the islands with dense tropical forest. Lowlands on the western portion of each of the main islands are sheltered by the mountains and have a well-marked dry season favorable to sugarcane. Other islands and island groups, which cover just 12.5% of the land area and house some 16% of the population, include Taveuni, southeast of Banua Levu, and Kadavu Island, south off Viti Levu, the third and fourth largest islands, respectively. The Mamanuka group, just off Nidai, and the Yasawa group, to the north of the Mamanukas, are popular tourist destinations. The Lomaibiti group, just off Suba with Lebuka, the former capital and the only major town on any of the smaller islands, is located on the island of Ovalau and is the next most frequented destination. The remote Lao group over the Koro Sea to the east near Tonga, from which it is separated by the Lakiba Passage, attracts domestic tourism from Fiji and Samoa. Two outlying regions are Rotuma, which is 240 miles to the north, and the uninhibited Coral Atoll and key Seva Ira, or Conway Reef, 260 miles to the southwest of Maine, Fiji. More than half of Fiji's population lives on the island coast, either in Suva or in smaller urban centers. The interior is sparsely populated because of its rough terrain. The islands are mountainous, with peaks up to 4,341 feet and covered with thick tropical forests. Fiji is the hub of the Southwest Pacific, midway between Vanu Vanuatu and Tonga. The archipelago is located between 176 degrees 53 minutes east and 178 degrees 12 minutes west. The 180 degree meridian runs through Tabauni, but the international date line is bent to give the uniform time zone to the entire group. With the exception of Rotuma, the Fiji group lies between 15 degrees 42 minutes and 20 degrees 2 minutes south. Rotuma is located 250 miles north of the group, 410 miles from Suva, 12 degrees and 30 minutes south of the equator. The only native mammalian life in Fiji is the fruit bat, and six varieties can be found on the islands, including the Fijian monkey-faced flying fox, one of the most primitive fruit bat species. Iguanas, including the rare crested iguana and their relatives, snakes and geckos, round out the major Fijian land animals. Birds watching in the rainforest is a major tourist draw in Fiji, and the islands have 55 different terrestrial species, nearly half of them of which are endemic. In populated areas along the coasts, most land animals are domestic. Mongooses introduced to the island to fight rats and other invasive pests can also be spotted. Fiji features one of the South Pacific's largest coral reef systems. Fiji is home to 2,600 species of plant life. Fiji, as well as New Zealand and other nearby groups, are known for their highly developed and diversified ferns. 303 varieties of ferns grow in Fiji, though 71% come from neighboring islands. The rainy tropical forest holds many epiphytes, plants that grow on limbs of trees, high in the rainforest and they include several varieties of orchids. Overall, 10% of the native plant life is unique to Fiji and cannot be found outside the islands according to Wildland Studies, an environmental program affiliated with California State University Monterey Bay Extended Education. In Fiji, protecting and respecting the island's natural resources is a prime public concern, whether from invasive foreign plant and animal life or domestic pollution. Each June, the country celebrates National Environment Week, a time to redirect the country's thoughts toward diminishing pollution.
and protecting the island's biodiversity. In 2011, Fiji's cabinet approved a redesign of the country's currency focusing on 20 iconic varieties of Fijian flora and fauna, one for each coin and note. Now we come to the arrival of primitive communism. By 5500 BP, pottery art from Fijian towns indicates the Lapita people settled the Fijian Islands first. Voyaging traders and settlers started these first settlements in Fiji from the west. Lapita pottery shards have been found in numerous excavations around the country. Aspects of Fijian culture are similar to the Melanesian culture of the Western Pacific, but have a stronger connection to the older Polynesian cultures. Trade between Fiji and neighboring archipelagos was done on canoes made from native Fijian trees found in Tonga. Tongan words are part of the language of the Lao group of islands. Pots made in Fiji have been found in Samoa and the Marquesas Islands. Across 620 miles from east to west, Fiji has been a nation of many languages. Obsidian, an otherwise rare volcanic glass in these islands, was found originating in Papua New Guinea. The black obsidian rock was discovered near Natadola in southwest Miti Levu. It had originated in the Kataubau obsidian mine on Talasea Peninsula on the island of New Britain in Papua New Guinea, some 2,700 miles distant. Although carried throughout the Western Pacific by the Lapita people, obsidian is not often found in Fiji. The obsidian shows signs of being worked, that is, and it probably arrived soon after the initial Lapita settlement in Burewa, about 3050 BP. Professor Dunn hypothesizes that it was kept by the Lapita settlers as a talisman reminder of where they had come from. Professor Patrick Nunn further hypothesizes that people could have begun their emigration from south coastal China and Taiwan some 7,000 years ago, settling in Papua New Guinea before drifting on to Fiji and other countries. Recent research by the Fiji Museum and the University of the South Pacific has found that 16 skeletons excavated in Borewa near Natadola in Sigatoka, uh, and Professor Nunn says, says that Urewa was the first human settlement in the Fiji archipelago, and that it was occupied from around 3,200 BP. The pita pottery found on the surface of the graves was 2,550 years old, and Fiji Museum archaeologist Sepeti Matararaba said that the area beside the sea must have been occupied because a great deal of pottery, hunting tools, and ancient shell jewelry has been discovered there. More than 20 pits were dug following this discovery of Lapita. And he said Lapita people were the first people to come to Fiji, Vanuatu, New Caledonia, Tonga, and Samoa. They left evidence of their existence by mainly their elaborated, decorated, and finely fashioned pottery." Unquote. None said that he, the evidence pointed to Papua New Guinea or the Solomon Islands as the place from where the earliest Fijians came as the pottery fragments were typical of the early Lapita period in Papua New Guinea and the Solomons, but not readily found on, <coughs> in, on Lapita pottery in Fiji. So we come to the transition, the chiefdom transition in Fiji. The transition from farming mariner tribal agriculture to simple chiefdoms is still to be filled out in the Fijian archaeological record. We pick up the story of transition to the servitude epic and its first socio-cultural stage of slavery in the Fijian record of advanced theocratic chiefdoms. In the AD 900s, Fiji was absorbed by the Tui Tonga Empire headquartered in Tonga. The Tongan influence brought Polynesian customs and language into Fiji. The empire began to decline in the AD 1200s. Between AD 1250 and 1560, there was an ancient Fijian village occupied by chiefs at Kuku in Nausori. Now an archaeological site, it is a heavily fortified battle fort containing unique features not seen elsewhere in Fiji. Archaeologist Sepeti Matararaba from the Fiji Museum expressed astonishment at some of the discoveries at the site, which included an iron axe used by white traders in exchange for Fijian artifacts. 
Now, some comments on the religion of cannibalism in the Fijian ATC. Constant warfare and cannibalism between warring tribes was a part of everyday life. During the 19th century, Rata Udre is said to have consumed 872 people and to have made a pile of stones to record his achievement. According to Derek Scar, ceremonial activity, uh, ceremonial, ceremonial occasions saw freshly killed corpses piled up for eating. Eat me was a proper ritual greeting from a commoner to a chief. Scar also reported that the posts that supported the chief's house or the priest's temple would have sacrificed bodies buried underneath them, with the rationale that the spirit of the ritually sacrificed person would invoke the gods to help support the structure, and men were sacrificed whenever posts had to be renewed. Also, when a new boat or drua was launched, it was if it was not hauled over men as rollers, crushing to them to death, it would not be expected to float long. Fijians today regard those times as the time of the devil. The ferocity of the cannibal, cannibal lifestyle deterred European sailors from going, going near Fijian waters, giving Fiji the name Cannibal Islands. As a result, Fiji remained unknown to the rest of the world. Ratucero Epeniso Kakobao Ratucero Epeniso Kakobao was a Fijian ATC warlord from the island of Bao, B-A-U, off the eastern coast of Viti Levu, who united part of Fiji's warring tribes under his leadership. He then styled himself as Tui Viti, or King of Fiji, and then Vui Palu, or Protector of Fiji. Claiming that Bao had suzerainty over the remainder of Fiji, he asserted that he was in fact the King of Fiji, and Kakobao subsequently engaged in constant warfare for almost 19 years to unify the islands under his authority. The last opposition to Kakobao's rule was defeated in the Battle of Kaba Village in Bau, Tekina, next to Bau Island. Kakobao won with the aid of the King of Tonga. In 1643, the Dutch explorer Abel Tasman visited Fiji while looking for the great southern continent. Then, in the 1800s, Europeans settled on the islands permanently. These first European settlers to Fiji were missionaries, whalers, and those engaged in then booming sandalwood and sea cucumber trade, which is an animal, even though it has a flat name, uh, locally called Beche de Mir, and a motley group of beachcombing bums. In 1865, a confederacy of independent kingdoms, Viti, was established with Kakobao as chairman of the General Assembly. Two years later, in 1867, the Confederacy split into the Kingdom of Bao and the Confederation of Lao, with Kakobao assuming kingship of the former. And in 1871, Kakobao built a united independent kingdom with Lebuka as his capital. He decided to set up a constitutional monarchy, and the first legislative assembly met in November of that year, 1871, both the legislature and the cabinet were dominated by foreigners, mostly from the United Kingdom and the USA. The Lao Islands were subject to periods of Tongan rule and then Fijian control until their eventual conquest by Cerro Epeniso Kakumau of the Kingdom of Fiji in 1871. In 1873, Kakumau ceded a Fijia heavily indebted to foreign creditors to the United Kingdom and in 1874, the UK seized the kingdom and proclaimed it a colony. In summer, Europeans began contact with Fiji in the AD 1600s. They encountered a slave stage kingdom. British imperialism made it a colony in 1874. The first governor of Fiji, Arthur Charles Hamilton Gordon, adopted a policy disallowing the use of native labor or any interference in their culture or way of life. British capitalists brought over Indian contract laborers from India to work on the sugar plantations. In 1875 and 76, an epidemic of measles killed over 40,000 Fijians, which was about one-third of the total Fijian population. The population in 1942 was approximately 210,000, of whom 94,000 were Indians, 102,080 Fijians, 2,000 Chinese and 5,000 Europeans. So in 
So now we come from to uh, the Cook Islands and Tuvalu, to the slave stage there and how it emerged from primitive communism. The Cook Islands are made up of 15 islands divided as the northern and southern groups. The islands are spread across many miles of ocean. The largest of them is Rarotonga, which is the political and economic capital of the nation. The Cook Islands were formerly known as the Hervey Islands, H-E-R-B-E-Y. Today this name only refers to the northern groups. The Cook Islands were settled in two waves. The first wave we call the Tahitian period, when the country was settled between A.D. 900 and 1300. The second wave we call the Maui settlement in A.D. 1600 when a large contingent from Tahiti settled in Rarotonga in the Takitumu district. Cook Islands are ethnically Polynesians of Eastern Polynesia. They are culturally associated with Tahiti, Eastern Islands, New Zealand, Maori, and Hawaii. The reef islands and atolls of Tuvalu are part of West Polynesia. Prehistorically, there was frequent canoe voyaging between the islands. Polynesian navigation skills featured such journeys on double-hull sailing canoes or outrigger canoes. The name Tuvalu means eight islands standing together. Polynesians spread from Samoa and Tonga into the Tuvalu and atolls. Thus, Tuvalu provided a stepping stone for migration into the Polynesian outlier communities in Melanesia and Micronesia. The Tui Tonga line of Tongan kings of the AD 900s reached the islands of Tuvalu in the 11th, uh, in the AD 1000s. The oral history of Nuatal recalls that in the 1400s, Tongan warriors were defeated in two successive battles on the reef of Nuatal. A third and fourth Tongan invasion of Nuatal occurred in the late 1500s, again with the Tongans being defeated. Fishing was the primary source of protein, with the cuisine of Tuvalu reflecting food that could be grown on low-lying atolls. The population levels of the low-lying islands of Tuvalu had to be managed because of the effects of periodic droughts and the risk of severe famines if the gardens were poisoned by salt from the storm surge of a tropical cy cyclone. The sweet potato called Kumara in Maori was widespread in Polynesia when Europeans first reached the Pacific. Remains of the plant in the Cook Islands have been carbon dated to AD 1000 and was brought to central Polynesia in AD 700 and then spread across Polynesia and apparently that happened on its own. That is, uh, it was brought over there by uh, various kinds of wind and water action. And that brings us to a conclusion of part two of our uh, lecture on Polynesia. And next we're going to move on to the strange case, or at least what I used to think of as the strange case of Easter Island. I'm going to let you bring up 65C.